of owning a cafe and other heroic deeds by Beware the Tisbero. Chapter 113 Hopes and Revelations. Grunting awake, Rapagendo grumbled curses into the dojo's flooring while he cracked his eyes open and stared blearily ahead. Totoroki Enji, you are under arrest. No. No fucking way! Pulling himself up, his body straining under his bulk, the brunette ogled what was going on with bewilderment and glee. Endeavor was getting arrested here in front of all these people. Oh, oh this was even better than beating him. Grinning and snickering to himself, he stretched his arms and watched as numerous police force officers crowded around the downed prick and roped him up with chains, traps, cubs, and... Wait, was... was that Aizawa Shoda standing over him as well? But... why? Cocking his head to the right, he watched as the quiet teacher followed after the ranting Totoroki, who was being carried away by the pigs. His grin broadened into something quite giddy. Mm. Oh, he had to see what happened next, and so since lots of other people were trailing after the damned prick, he shoved aside the affront he'd felt at being floored and trotted after the officials, a big blonde guy and a kid with huge red wings. Huh. I demand the right to call my agency. I Looking over those soft, shiny crimson feathers... Kendo couldn't help the feeling of sweet satisfaction as the old timer struggled like a big mouth bass wriggling on the line. It was priceless. The endeavor of the endeavor offices have been closed until further notice, I'm afraid. Furthermore, your assets, personal or otherwise, have been frozen, your sidekicks are under caution, and my officers are currently searching through your properties for any other incriminating evidence. Oh Ah uh he should probably text Setsuno about that sooner rather than later, shouldn't he? The so-called master thief was always careful, though, so he was pretty sure the cops wouldn't know that he'd been skulking around. What? That? That's not possible. Sit me down. Set me down this instant. <laughs> the old fart still had some fight left in him. Ah, damn. If he went supernova, he'd probably... I saw what's if you would. Eh, what did they need to teach for? He... Of course. Feeling his eyebrows sprint towards his hairline, he couldn't quite stop himself from bulking as he watched the teal gi weaver's hair snake upwards. And Todoroki's flames well They just died. The asshole sagged. The pigs were now manhandling him into the back of a huge armored transport, so Aizawa could switch off quirks, huh? Hadn't just Sagi been looking for someone like that? Humming thoughtfully, he fished his phone out of a concealed pocket in the back of his black belt, his eyes narrowing as the winged kid and Sir Nine-Eye crowded around the sensei he'd spoken to. Hmm, they all looked pretty chummy, didn't they? The big blonde guy in particular seemed to be real friendly with him, too. Huh. Rapagendo. Oi, boss! You're still interested in kizzling out quirks, right? Chisaki. What have you found? Grinning a little, he moved a little closer to keep an ear on the conversation running across the people he was observing, his large fingers tapping as quickly as they could so he could hit send with that preamble. Not what, what, who? His name's Aizawa Shoda, and he's just taking that Endeavor's quirk. I don't think it's permanent or nothing, but I bet he's worth your looking into. Oh, and joy of joys, the flame-bearded fuckers just got arrested and the pigs are sniffing around his place, so you can tell Setsuna if you want, or you can let the little prick get caught, you know? The look on his face would be priceless. Agreeing that he, Kendo, and Toshinori would head to Yue whilst Marai and Azuhiro followed Kenji-san and now Masa to Tartarus, God, he could hardly wait to hug Davi and Ray to meet the children they'd managed to save properly to call Tomoko and speak to her and all of the local pros so they could celebrate together. It really was very kind of them to take care of his business while he took care of this business, wasn't it? He- Oi, teach! You're not leaving so soon, are ya? Blinking, he and his partner stopped, his head craning back to observe Rapakendo as he waved after them, his ulking form jogging forwards. I was kind of hoping the drama might against your skill, you know? Smiling despite himself, he pulled away from his partner and observed the British youth his head cocking to the side. Considering everything I just saw, Rapazan, I don't think I'd offer you a fair challenge. He admitted with a little shrug. I'm pretty sure you'll have every opportunity to win the tournament, though. So, good luck to you. He offered with a nod. Oh! Uh, yeah, thanks for- Oh! Oh! 
didn't you say the owner bankery or something? I, uh, I'd like to miss it sometime, you know? To the fat a little. Up my games in terms of tactics and stuff. The younger stumbled, his smile going for sheepish, but there was something else there, too. He just couldn't put a finger on it. Oh, my partner is an excellent baker, it's true, but he actually owns a cafe. Toshinori pricked up his form, rounding his left side and offering one of his business guards to the blinking fighter who took it with a bow of his own. Toshi was always so quick to show him in the Noroneko off, wasn't he? The level of goofball. The straight cat cafe, huh? He grinned, those beady eyes finding. Dude, you have actual cats there? That's so cool. They're like in my top five favorite animal list, you know? He tittered before shoving the card inside his gi. Thanks, mom, bro. Oh, I teach. That was a great advice today, too. He nodded. I don't live too far from that part of Musutafa, so I guess I'll be seeing you around, all right? He furthered with a jaunty little wave that seemed far too innocent for such a bulked up guy. Uh, sure, have fun in there. He replied whilst the other snapped off a salute before turning on his heel and strutting back into the Budokan proper, whilst Kago quietly murmured, Jeez, I've never met such a cheerful meathead before. Do you think he realized his nose was broken? Snorting at him, Shoto moved to ruffle the winged teen's hair with a, Don't judge, we're not about that, are we, hmm? before the three of them continued on their walk. It was hot outside, and as one of the actual dojo staff ran up to them, he asked her to pass on his apologies to Ojiro Shisho and the other judges, and that he'd contact them all properly later, because right now... Right now we had family members to cuddle and congratulations to pass on, didn't he? And speaking of family... Hey guys, what took you so long, huh? We're melting out here, you know? Smiling and sharing a chuckle with his two escorts, Shota allowed Takeo and Tadeo to swallow him in a hug when he reached them, the pair having been lounging by Hercules in one of the smaller employee parking lots. Then their warm bodies having thoroughly sandwiched him, they pulled away to thank Toshinori and Keigo for getting such good close-ups of that flame and bastard's face. Like a rainy fish, his own device out of his bag before settling in the back of the car with his brother so they could check him over for injuries. Then the vehicle purring to life, he regarded the younger twin with a small considering smile. Are you sure you didn't want to stay? You could have won, you know. Nah, let's no beggy. The golden-eyed fighter huffed whilst crossing his arms, his grin satisfied as he nudged him. Family's more important than Moto-san knows that. And besides, with Kamui Woods and Mount Lady on their way to Tartarus so that Kanji-san and the others have backup if they need it, just having tied that cheer for me would have been lame. Ouch. The marine biologist breathed his face deadpan. I'll be sure to remember that the next time you want to borrow my J-Rail pass, little brother. He upped while leaning over if to flick the black belt and get swore it. What? The, the, oh, don't be mean. The gale floundered as he also leaned across him to smear finger marks across the other 21-year-old's glasses, causing the older twin to hiss, the pair of them slapping at each other whilst he sat and leaned his head out of the way. Show that is picking on me! <laughs> he missed this. It's like you're both six all over again. Even if their childish sneak attacks were a little unbecoming. Okay, that's it. Knock it off, you two. He sighed fondly, his hands reaching out to decisively capture their flailing hands, each of them pulling faces at him, causing him to chuckle despite the sternness he wanted to convey. Time out, I made it. But can't, Dan! They chorused in unison, their glinting eyes not matching the scowls they were trying to build. Boys, do not make me make your other father turn this car around! Gago, of all people, called in a mockstern voice, his grin shit-eating, as he turned in his seat to waggle his brows at them, his phone recording the entire thing. That's what I thought. Now then, who's up for a game of I Spy, ne? Nah? Sequestered quietly away within the sanctity of the office his boss had allowed him, Chisaki Kai, regarded all the information he could find about Shota Aizawa, his eyes narrowing a touch. It was a pity. Such a pity that his quirk was so underdeveloped. Even if he stole the man, took his blood, it wouldn't be enough. Not from what he'd seen of the Budokan footage flooding the internet. Not from the information that Harry had managed to piece together from varying sources, both available and not. 
their best hackers having opened up quirk registry files, social services files, and a few classified documents that referred to this man as C.D. C.D., who, alongside a teacher at one of those hero academies, had successfully brought down the legendary, almost mythical figure of all for one by limiting his powers enough for all might to neutralize him. That was impressive. However, with both Aizawa and that educator having emitter-based quirks, there was only so much he could do. Only so much altering could be made right now. It wouldn't be enough to form the kind of drugs he wanted to develop. For although Aizawa could erase quirks, the ability lasted only for as long as he could keep his eyes open. It wasn't enough. It wasn't good enough. It would take too long to develop into what he wanted, if it could be developed at all. However, this man was the first person he and his underlings had come across that possessed such a power. That gave his twenty-year-old self hope, at least. Hope that someone who could offer a more permanent solution to the quirk problem that had thrown his boss from the apex of the underworld where he belonged, he... He would find a way. He would find the missing piece, and in the meantime, why not let Rapa get to know this person? Keep a form of surveillance over him just in case... They were encountering new medical procedures, new quirks all the time. He was always looking ahead. Yes, maybe this Aizawa Shoto could be useful to them. Useful to him, at some point. He was worth continued consideration, at any rate, wasn't he? To say that he was fuming was a gross understatement. However, as he was led through the oppressive maze that was Tartarus's screening rooms, Todoroki Enji couldn't help the feeling of ominous foreboding stewing beneath his skin. He was here, the most formidable man that their country, that their world had ever encountered, and he, the number two pro-hero, was also here. His title lost, his assets gone, and to top it all off... Ah, Dodoroki-san, please take a seat, won't you? He was being officially processed by Sir Nidai, that impassive face staring at him with all the neutrality of a corpse, as he was forced to sit the straight jacket he'd imagined earlier, now tightly wrapped about him in further quirk-restrictive materials, his body stifled by the heat of it all. God, it made him want to scream! Are you happy now, then? He managed as he was forced to endure an evaluation by one of his peers in this small, starkly white room with six armed guards at his back. They had their guns trained on him. I'm not quite sure how or why you'd think anything about the charges brought against you would make me happy, Todoroki. The straight-laced prick replied mildly while flipping open an extensive beige folder, brimming with papers, images, and witness statements. The known atrocities you've committed against your family are abhorrent atrocities, he mocked. Don't act as though this... All of this isn't the result of you and that Westerboo oaf's machinations. You've been working with that Aizawa brat to ruin my name, my legacy, because you knew I was almost at the number one spot. That my youngest will succeed me should I fail. He snarled. Todoroki, I... And I bet you're fucking him, aren't you? He sneered. That's how you got that simpering little nobody on side, isn't it? What did you promise him in exchange for his services, huh? How did you clear him to use his quirk against me legally, uh? He snarled, his turquoise eyes narrowing. Well. Sat across the table from a man he'd always despised. Shouldn't have felt so fulfilling. However, as NG bastard snapped and scowled. But I just couldn't help the curl of satisfaction budgeting in his chest, his brows rising a little at the accusations pouring out of the bastard he was very much looking forward to booking in. For as a former pro-hero, laws dictated that another pro with Tartarus credentials be here to process him. Ah, uh, he'd never been more in favor of this particular stipulation. I regret to inform you that everything... From the way we collected evidence to the sting operation which foiled you today has been honest above board and sanctioned by the PHSC and several government officials. He replied pointedly before with a little grin, he tilted his head. As for me fucking Aizawa son, as you so tactfully put it, he murmured with a slight shrug. I should imagine that my actual partner would be thrilled by such a prospect. I, however, would much rather have him as a different. 
He stated, his grin quirking slightly while he continued. And besides, I believe that Aizawa san's fiance would be more than a little displeased with such a notion. So, for your own safety, I truly wouldn't bring up that topic again. He added, I believe you're in enough trouble as it is.